Now, Boeing's troubled Starliner spaceship has departed the International Space Station to return to Earth without astronauts. The spacecraft encountered technical issues on its way to the ISS in June. On board were astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams. Despite Boeing's assurances, NASA decided the problems with the Starliner could not be resolved sufficiently to allow a crewed return. Wilmore and Williams are now stuck in space for another six months. They're due to return to Earth on a spacecraft by Boeing competitor SpaceX in February. Keith Cowing is the editor of nasawatch.com and he joins me from Washington to unpack all of this. Keith, it's good to see you again. This was an eight-day mission that is now in at least eight months. Did the undocking at least go smoothly? Apparently, it went perfectly. Um, you just showed the video there. They had a series of engine tests. As the spacecraft backed off, everything went just as it was supposed to do. Now is about a six-hour uh, interval where the spacecraft will go around the Earth a couple times, fire its engines, and hopefully it'll land the way it's supposed to in the desert in the southwest United States. I want to give our viewers a better idea of some of the strange things that are going on with the Starliner. There's been this audio circulating of noises it was making recently while docking yeah. uh, into the ISS. Um, let's listen to a recording of Butch Wilmore speaking with ground control. Uh, this a strange noise coming through the speaker. I don't, I don't know what, what's making it, but uh, I don't know if it's something that maybe is connected uh, between here and there, making that happen. We can configure that, Butch. Give us a minute and I'll call you back when it's ready. Okay. Station Houston on two, we're configured for audio via hardline and CST. All right, Butch, that one came through. It was kind of like a pulsing noise, almost like a Sonar ping. Yeah, I'll do it one more time and I'll let you scratch your heads and see if you can figure out what's going on. Here we go. Okay, that reminded me of some sci fi movies that did not end very well. What was that? Well, you just, you had the perfect description. Uh, it wouldn't be sonar because there's no water up there, so maybe it was a phaser. It, it's a feedback. It, you have like a whole bunch of people talking to each other on these loops. And somebody leaves a microphone open, and you've had it, I'm sure, talking to guests internationally, where the echo comes back and forth. That's all mm -hmm. it was. But it did sound kind of cool, didn't it? <laughs> cool is one way to put it. Scary, perhaps, another if you're trying to board that spacecraft back to Earth. Now, Boeing said that it was safe. Why didn't NASA believe them? You know... The good thing about this is that they have these long discussions. Back in the earlier days of NASA, some decisions were made because, yeah, we got to go do the mission, and uh, we lost several crews, and we had some other near mishaps. So on one hand, it's a good sign that finally somebody says, you know what, even though you're telling me it's safe, I'm just going to err on the side of safety. That's not a bad thing to do, and uh, they really went through this methodically. So I cannot fault them for that. But everything that led up to this, um, quite frankly, I don't think that spacecraft should have been launched until they got these thrusters figured out, which they didn't. And uh, that cost a lot of people a lot of time and a lot of money, and it's going to put Boeing in a very difficult situation. Right, exactly. About a billion dollars was spent just fixing those problems with Boeing, and now SpaceX, its competitor, is stepping into the rescue. But why is it taking so long? Uh, why does it? Why do we have to wait till February to bring back these astronauts? Well, there's a, it, this is there's a bit of a traffic issue here, and I, I've been on research expeditions up to the Arctic near the North Pole, and you have, you know, X number of people have to go to this island or that base, and there's a plane that can only take ten people plus all their food and their fuel and their whatever. So you have to plan this out. What happened was they were supposed to go up there, spend eight days, make sure everything worked and come home. Well, they're not. But there was a whole series of flights backed up for logistics and for crew. Now you have to find two seats for them. So they bump two people off. They'll eventually fly. But you can't just bring them home. That mission is supposed to go up there and stay there for six months. So... Again, you may ask me the next question, how are the, how are the, how's the crew doing? I've yet to meet an astronaut who is upset when they find out they have to spend more time in outer space. And I know a lot of astronauts. Right. And now NASA has said they will not yet comment on what happens to the relationship with Boeing. Do you think Boeing is out now, essentially? 
gosh, I've watched NASA. That's what my website says I do. I don't know exactly what's going to happen here because the way this contract is written, Boeing is pretty much eating, uh, to use a technical term, eating a lot of money every time they have a problem with that spacecraft. NASA's not reimbursing them. And uh, at some point, they're going to have to turn to you know, the, their management and say, hey, you know, is this, do we want to stay in business doing this? They do have a contract with NASA that has them flying certain spacecraft uh, flights with people on it. But if NASA is not confident that crew members can go in there, um, somebody's got to make a decision. So right. I would not, I wouldn't say with 100% certainty that the spacecraft will ever fly again. Right. It might, but I don't think it'll fly many times. 